We were waiting so, for this moment. We're told Speaker uh, Mike Johnson has now taken to the microphone after meeting with Jewish students. Let's listen live on the Columbia campus. So, thank you all for being here today. We have uh, several members of Congress here, and we're here today at one of America's preeminent academic institutions on a very important day and a very important time. Throughout history, Columbia students have contributed to the great storybook of America's life and thought. Visionary American leaders like Alexander Hamilton and John Jay and the Jewish leader Gershom Sheshis knew the self-evident truth that was at the heart of this country at, and once at the heart of this university, and that is that we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. They should not be infringed. The, the, the founders and, and the, the great leaders who had come through this institution in the past believed in religious liberty, they believed in democracy, they believed in morality and virtue and the dignity of every human person. They believed in the free exchange of ideas and they detested mob rule. We are standing here right now on the steps of the Lowe Library. In this very building right behind us, Columbia University once awarded Winston Churchill an honorary degree and it was Churchill who said, it is manifestly right that Jews should have a national home where they may be reunited. We believe in that principle. And today I'm here to proclaim to all those who gnash their teeth and demand to wipe the state of Israel off the map and attack our innocent Jewish students, this simple truth. Neither Israel nor these Jewish students on this campus will ever stand alone. Today, Hamas issued an endorsement statement of the protesters on this campus. They called them the future leaders of America. It is detestable. All of this has to be said because the cherished traditions of this university are being overtaken right now by radical and extreme ideologies. They place a target on the backs of Jewish students in the United States and here on this campus. A growing number of students have chanted in support of terrorists. They have chased down Jewish students. They have mocked them and reviled them. They have shouted racial epithets. They have screamed at those who bear, bear the Star of David. Enjoy your free speech. They've told Jewish students who wear the Star of David to leave the country. And shamefully, some professors and faculty have joined the mobs. Things have gotten so out of control that the schools canceled in-person classes and now they've come up with this hybrid model where they will discriminate against Jewish students. They, they are not allowed to come to class anymore for fear of their lives and it's detestable. As Columbia has allowed these lawless agitators and radicals to take over, the virus of anti-Semitism has spread across other campuses. By some counts, as many as 200 universities have a similar form of protest right now. At Yale, a Jewish student was stabbed in the eye with a Palestinian flag and 45 students were arrested. At NYU, pro-Hamas protesters were shouting from the river to the sea. Anti-Israel encampments are popping up at universities all across this country. The madness has to stop. The madness has to stop. We, we just left a meeting with students, Jewish students, who told us of the heinous acts of bigotry that they have experienced simply because of their faith. Their bravery is inspiring, much more inspiring than some of the activities we're seeing here. And they should never have to confront such hate on an American college campus. It's such a, such a, a revered institution. Anti-Semitism has been growing in America, and it's clear why. Powerful people have refused to condemn it, and some have even peddled it themselves. From university professors to public officials, people in positions of authority have denied the horrific facts of September 11, 2001, the attacks on the United States that happened right here in New York City, and they've attempted to excuse or to ignore the barbaric attack of Hamas in Israel on October 7, 2023, where Israeli women and children were savagely raped and murdered, and infants were cooked in ovens. Crowds of radical activists have chanted death to America and on our own streets in this country, and sub-public officials have refused to condemn them. Others have openly defended these acts on campus, and the, the harassing and the, the intimidation and the threatening of innocent Jewish students simply because of who they are. They've called that peaceful protest, 
and some have even gone as far as calling for the state of Israel to be eliminated. These are words we expect from ayatollahs in Iran, not American lawmakers and not American students. And unsurprisingly, it has given way to threats and violence in a generation of students who feel safe in their own classrooms, who don't feel safe in their own classrooms, or where they live or where they worship. Let me say this very simply. No American of any color or creed should ever have to live under those kinds of threats. That is not who we are in this country. Sadly, Colombia's administrators have chosen to let the threats, the fear, and the intimidation of the mob rule to overtake American principles like free speech and the free, free exchange of ideas and the free exercise of religion. They have co-opted First Amendment arguments to protect genocide and to elevate the voices of anti-Semitism. They have proven themselves to be incapable of achieving their basic responsibility, which is keeping students safe. We just can't allow this kind of hatred and anti-Semitism to flourish on our campuses, and it must be stopped in its tracks. Those who are perpetrating this violence should be arrested. And I'm here today, I'm here today joining my colleagues and calling on President Shafiq to resign if she cannot immediately bring order to this chaos. As Speaker of the House, I am committing today that the Congress will not be silent as Jewish students are expected to run for their lives and stay home from their classes hiding in fear. In the House of Representatives, we've already acted to address anti-Semitism on campuses. We have passed a number of statutes to address this matter, and we call upon the U.S. Senate to act upon our legislation. I have a, a couple of my colleagues here that I'd like to share a few words. I'll turn it over first to the chair of the, uh, of the House Education and Workforce Commission, Virginia Fox, Congresswoman Virginia Fox, North Carolina. Virginia? Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Columbia University is in a free fall. Following the explosion of this anti-Semitism, the Education and Workforce Committee started investigating. So far, the committee has uncovered key failures in the administration's response to the anti-Semitic attacks and displays embroiling this campus. First, President Shafiq presented false testimony to the committee regarding the removal of Professor Joseph Massad. No action was taken. In addition, the administration has suspended two Jewish students for a made-up chemical attack. So I have a message President Shafiq, and a message for you all, too. The inmates are running the asylum. That's right. Take back control of this once great institution. You took action last week. It's time to act again. If not, the committee will pursue every possible avenue to create a safe learning environment for Jewish students. I yield, I yield back. <laughs> Next is uh, Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis from here in New York. Welcome to New York City. Speaker. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much for coming today. I'm so happy to welcome the speaker to New York City. Uh, and we appreciate his leadership and coming here to condemn the anti-Semitism that has been allowed to fester on this campus. We just met with a group of students who told us that not only have they been bullied, but they've been, many of them, assaulted. They have been spat on. They have had to walk the halls of this campus to see swastikas painted. These are clear examples of anti-Semitism, and it's shocking to see that it's happening in the most diverse and welcoming city in America. It is truly outrageous, and it's clear that the president of this university cannot control the campus. They can, she cannot and will not hold students who are doing these types of anti-Semitic activities accountable, and that she cannot keep the students who are of Jewish faith, who, who have paid a lot of money and have worked very hard to get to an Ivy League institution like this, that she cannot keep them safe. And that is why I join my colleagues in calling for her resignation. Thank you. Next, uh, another congressman from New York, Anthony D'Esposito. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you are a protester on this campus and you are proud that you've been endorsed by Hamas, you are part of the problem. When you cheer on the fact that you enjoy Hamas and Hezbollah, you are yourself part of the problem. Mr. Speaker, I am proud to join with you here today in calling for the immediate resignation of the president of Colombia. She has failed her duty. She is not keeping students safe. And we see on this campus the hate-filled speech that is carrying through this country. Right. Another New York congressman, Mike Lawler. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for being here in New York. I want Palestinians to be free, too, from their oppressor, Hamas. Right. And every single one of you students that support Hamas are an absolute abomination. It is shameful, shameful that you would support a terrorist organization that butchered and beheaded and burned innocent women, children, and babies. I went to Israel a month after the attack on October 7th, and I watched a 21-minute unedited video, raw footage of the attack. I watched exactly what Hamas did, and sadly, sadly here in America, we have students endorsing the butchering and brutality of a terrorist organization. If you want a ceasefire, the fastest way for a ceasefire to occur is for Hamas to surrender and to release the hostages. And if you can't call for that, you are a pathetic embarrassment to this institution and to students everywhere. It is time for President Shafiq to resign in disgrace. She has lost control of this campus. She has lost control of this institution. And after listening to her comments inside, it is clear that she has no intention of getting this university under control and ensuring the safety and well-being of every student. That is what is entitled to students attending this institution. If the students are not safe, if the institution will not act, Congress has a responsibility to do so, and we will. That's right. Good job, Mike. I, I want to thank my colleagues for sharing their, their thoughts here. I want to say this as well. At the start of the American Revolution, the doors of this institution, once known as King's College, were closed. When the war ended, the institution reopened and was renamed Columbia College. It was a shift from the tyranny of the monarchy to the freedom at the heart of the American experiment. And now the forces of hatred and oppression once again are on the march. They're, they've begun to try to close Columbia's doors to a segment of students. To every Jewish student listening to us, no matter where you are around the country, you have my word. The U.S. House of Representatives will do everything in our power to ensure that you are safe, you can freely practice your faith, and you can go to school just like everybody else. We will punish those who have allowed this violence and bigotry to go unchecked. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.